Building the shipping container home behind me has turned out to be a much bigger challenge than we could have ever imagined. Nearly two years ago, we set out on the adventure of recycling four 40 foot long high cube shipping containers and turning them into our home. With no how-to guide on a build like this, we've been figuring things out as we went along from design, engineering, fabrication, craning, and even assembling the containers together in the middle of the woods. As soon as we finally thought we had a handle on the project, everything fell apart. It was back to the drawing board to build a new dream. While we waited, we pressed on with huge projects like insulation, a heat source, and building an off-grid electrical system to power our home for the rest of our lives. With only days left until lift day, not one, but two major winter storms tried to derail our plans, but nothing is going to stop us from building our dream home. Come along. So with all the snow we got, the first thing that we need to do is go on top of the shipping container home and shovel all that snow off so we can start welding the brackets in place. Let's go. <laughs> it's at 15 years old. You got it all figured out. I'm in over my head. I'm in over my head. This is a lot of work. The snow is super, super heavy. I'm sweating. Yeah, it's so... So much more snow than I was expecting. Out of breath, but I mean, it's a good workout to start the day. <laughs> I quickly did want to address something though. A lot of you have asked, because this roof is flat, are we gonna have to like plow the snow off every single time it snows? The answer to that is no. The beams underneath are engineered in such a way that this can take up to seven feet of snow. The engineer knew we were pretty lazy when it comes to snow <laughs> shoveling, so he put a little extra like footage in there. Yeah, the only reason that we're actually shoveling this today is because this beam right here that's covered in snow and ice, we need to um, weld brackets onto that, so. And we can't do it through the snow, so we're gonna get all the snow out of here so that it's nice and clean for the welders to work at. Yeah, so. Right. Still got lots to do, we're gonna keep at it. That was a good little break though. <laughs> It's really warm. Okay, I'm gonna go down. I wanna get the panels just so we can get as much power as we can. Yeah, I'm sure we're getting some solar protection. Yeah. Something real special, but nothing so special. Of course, right when we need it, I broke my snow rake, but it actually worked out well. What I found with this is it was kind of hard because it's so long when you were trying to get the stuff down at the bottom. So I can still put this back in and get the stuff at the top and then I get it to come out. It's like a little mini one that makes it so much easier. It actually works out for the best, but I'm only halfway done, so I'm gonna keep going. All right, so I just finished doing all the panels and you might notice that there's still some snow on it. There's two reasons for this. One, the brackets that hold them together actually pop through the panel, so it's a little hard when you're pulling the rake down, it catches on it and kind of lifts up. And two, the panels are producing electricity and a byproduct of that is heat. So even with all the way up to six inches of snow on these panels, they will still produce electricity and they will still clean themselves off. But by removing as much of the snow as we can, we're going to quickly make it so that they can start producing high efficiency energy a lot quicker. What? They're starting to cut. Oh, wow. They're starting to cut. That's good, because I was about to move on to some more shoveling, and you know what? I need a little break, because my shoulders are feeling a little tense. <laughs> So if you remember from the 3D rendering that we showed you a few weeks ago, this point right here is gonna be the access point for the upstairs of the container home. So as you'll remember, this was not a part of the plan at all. Where I'm standing right now, there was supposed to be a spiral staircase that accessed the upper container, but it didn't work because of code, so the stairwell is gonna go right here. So what we're gonna do now is cut out this area so when the stairwell tower is ready, it will be able to be put right into place and fused together. I'm turning up the heat, no one else can do it better. Whoa. Okay, this is so exciting to watch. So what's happening right now is they have the frame that's gonna support the opening for entering the stairs all put together. So cool. 
Now it's outside and they're lining it up to where it goes and it's just really cool just to see it. Like this is where our stairs are going to be, finally. It's wild, six months later, but we're gonna see if there's anything we can do to help and if not, we're just gonna keep watching because we're pretty good at that. <laughs> Get, getting to be pro at it. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is way, way too loud to have any audio on. I'll spare your eardrums. But what's happening is Todd and the two welders are working to get the entryway open that's gonna access the upstairs. They've been grinding for about two hours now, so it's quite a big project, but I think we're almost there. I cannot wait to see that get kicked out and the big opening open up. It's gonna be awesome. How are you finding it? Good. It's kind of nice seeing how bright it's going to be. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, if there's going to be walls that closes it in a little, but it's nice. Yeah. What do you think? It's really cool. It's loud. My ears are ringing. Oh, yeah. I mean, being inside a metal building while grinding and welding, it's quite a lot. Yeah. But we're going to keep at it. We'll spare your eardrums and you can listen to some nice music instead. Yeah. <laughs> It is way too many hours later of chiseling spray foam out of that cavity. Todd and the guys are still at it. It's brutal, but it's a necessary step. Like if we hadn't have spray foamed that cavity, the containers would have been cold all winter long. Plus we didn't really know where the stairwell tower was gonna land. We're figuring this out as we go. What can you do? But it is very much still winter here and Todd has been spending way too much time in the tractor using this bucket to plow. This bucket, if you don't know anything about tractors, I didn't until a few weeks ago. This is mainly meant for like gravel and soil and all of that, not for snow. So I've got a little surprise for Todd that I think is gonna make him very happy. How heavy do you think that is? Six, uh, good. 600? Yeah, good six, 800 pounds. pounds. So we'll strap it, I guess, Rich. So we are going with a six foot wide snow blower. This is gonna completely change the way that we're plowing our snow. It typically takes around an hour and a half with the bucket. This is apparently gonna take 10 minutes every time it snows. It's gonna be huge. This is just to hold that, that link that he's putting in now. Okay. And there's nothing on the tractor, you can just rest it in this. Okay. So good news, we have got the snowblower attached to the tractor. The hydraulic lines aren't working for some reason, and I can't really provide any help because I don't know how it works. So a question we get asked often is, how do we reinforce the shipping container once we cut for the doors and the windows? So the way that we do it is we use two inch piping that goes around the openings and that gives it the rigidity as if the corrugated metal was still there. So that's what they're working on now. We've got the hole, they've got the hole cut open into the side of the container and now they're going to put that two inch piping all the way around just to really sure it up and give it structural integrity. It's the red in the bottom, black in the Hope. top. I think, I think that's what it is. Hidden no, it's just reverse the two. Yeah. So what was wrong? Okay, so we just we we switched it over. So the first ports that we did, okay. we switched it over to the to the next set of ports over to the right. So it's in function two. Okay. Yep. So center push yep. push the center, button in. Push button in. Go back and forth, and it'll direct that for you. Okay, got yep. it. Yep. Seems easy enough. It's easy. You'll get you'll get used to it. Yeah. Around. It's time to give it a go. Very excited. You want to just raise this up a bit so pull push pull that back. You want to increase the throttle to it. Okay. And then when you're ready, I'll pull, we'll close the doors. You'll pull up on this button and then it'll start going and you just back, just go straight over that snow that we talked about. Well, yeah. Yeah. Very exciting. <laughs> I'm gonna go get Todd. 
Well, it's safe to say my husband has a new favorite toy. <laughs> this is gonna be such a game changer. It's gonna make plowing the driveway, blowing the driveway, I should say, that much faster. Like we just did this whole swoop and it took like 30 seconds. So it's gonna be a huge time saver. Great decision. Give myself a pat on the back. <laughs> So what usually would take about an hour and a half, what was I out there? Maybe 30, 40 minutes, and half yeah. of that was just having fun and like learning. So. You're happy about it? Yeah, I am. Thank you, it makes it so much easier than trying to shovel the driveways, otherwise we'd be in here all winter. I'm not one that typically does the shoveling. This is definitely like a Todd thing. Shocker. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm cooking right now. I'm making us pizza. We, yeah. all, we all bring something different to the table. That's true. He's making some pizza and garlic fingers, which is looking and smelling amazing. And we're gonna have just kind of like a cozy night in, fitting with this snowstorm vibes. And we're gonna watch British comedies. We've really gotten into them lately, and I think they align with our it's, dry sense of humor. Yeah, like, I was just gonna say, like, I'm sure you know this by now, but we're very dry and th th like British humor, it's just different. It's so different and we found the really good ones and that's thanks to our friends at Surfshark who's the sponsor of today's video. You might be asking, what is a VPN? Well, that stands for Virtual Private Network, which is a way of taking your private and sensitive information and routing it through secure servers to protect you from would-be hackers, as well as changing your location online. You've heard us talking about how much we love Surfshark because it allows us to work with confidence while using public Wi-Fis at cafes or hotels when we're traveling. But hands down, our favorite feature is the ability to unlock libraries on our favorite streaming platforms that may not be available to us where we live. For instance, tonight, our streaming platform thinks that we took a hop, skip, and a jump across the pond to watch our favorite British comedies, but we're actually gonna curl up on the couch with some homemade pizza and watch it from home. Using our promo code Tyler and Todd, as well as the link in our description box down below, you're going to save 83%, as well as receive an extra three months for free. That works out to less than the cost of a cup of coffee per month for unlimited, secure, internet. We have TV loaded on the laptop because, thanks love, the TV has not been working properly lately, so we are watching. Should probably get that fixed, right? Yeah, well, just add that to the do-do list, you know, fix the TV, build a house, yeah. all these different things. It's almost time to start our seeds for the vegetable gardens too, which is a whole nother can of worms. But anyway, we are going to continue on. We're watching Motherland, in case you're wondering. It's a really funny show. And we will get into this pizza and catch up with you in the morning. I'm already in sweat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good night. <laughs> Good morning. We got an absolutely insane amount of snow overnight. We haven't really had a lot of snow this winter and it seems like it all came right now. It is a winter wonderland here. Which is like just our luck that we have this amazing winter and days before the addition gets here, <laughs> yeah. this happens, but it's gonna be a long day. Our plan is we're gonna start shoveling down here and then just work our way up to the house. You know? How does that sound, Eddie? Huh? You're gonna get a shovel and get to work? <laughs> They're having so much fun. Squirrel's running around here somewhere too. I don't know where she went. Hey! Got everyone out with us. <laughs> hey, it's a family effort to shovel. It's cute. She actually really enjoys the snow. Yeah. I don't know if that's normal for cats or not, but she's just like jumping around the snowbanks. Yeah. Um, of course, I'm Eddie I'm sure loves the it novelty too. will wear off. Like eventually she's gonna be like, oh, this is like annoying. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you ready to get to work? <laughs> All right, we're gonna start shoveling and get this done. Next year we should just like stock up enough that we don't have to worry about shoveling and we can just ride the winter out. Yeah, we really should. All right, we're done shoveling down here, so we're gonna start making our way up the driveway with the tractor, but we're gonna put all the animals inside because the snowblower is honestly no joke. It could do some serious damage, and it's kind of a little dicey that I'm even allowed to run it, so. 
<laughs> it's definitely safer that they're inside anytime we're using any of the heavy equipment here. Yeah, it's not a toy. It's not to be played with, so. Yeah, all right. Let's start making our way up. We got a lot to do. I know, and we gotta get to the solar panels first so that we can clear them off so we can start producing some power to replenish our batteries. So, we're gonna get moving. Imagine if we had to shovel the driveway. Mm-hmm. It's gonna take forever. Are you ready? Yeah. Stay clear. You know I'm blind in that one eye. Okay. Oh, gotta do the truck. All right, so now that the truck and the car are both cleared off, Todd can continue moving up the driveway with the snowblower. I'm just gonna move them out of the way, bring them back down to the dome area where we're all cleared off and good. It's kind of shocking how much snow we actually got. I'm sure we said that already, but it's a lot. You good? Yeah. Okay, I'll move the car down. Okay, I'll move the truck. Okay, I was just updating them. Oh. Still got a ways to go. <laughs> Looks like he got a little stuck there. <laughs> All right, well, things were going really smoothly. The driveway is just about done with the main part. It makes such quick work, this snowblower. So, happy with that, but I did just break a shear pin, which is what keeps the auger spinning, but it's this piece that, rather than the actual auger breaking, the shear pin breaks. So, anyway, I have to go a bit more because for some reason I thought that it was a good idea to keep them in the workshop instead of in the tractor. So now I get to walk through all this snow to get the shear pin. Look at this. This just shows how much snow fell. A lot of snow. Wow. How are you doing? Good, I broke a shear pin. Oh, did you? Yeah. I wonder why you stopped. Yeah. Tyler decided he wanted to come and help with the shear pin. Because it sounds like it's just sheer fun. <laughs> oh my. So. You can see this here should line up like that. So then we use these little bolts to put it back together. It happens when you hit rocks with the snowblower. Right here, um, there's a dip. Yeah, we're still learning, so. I just, I forgot to see if that's the one. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Pretty crazy that it just breaks that easy, eh? Yeah, better that than the tractor or the snowblower. Yeah, true. All right, back to it. <laughs> so while Todd continues making progress with the snowblower, I'm gonna get started on clearing off all these panels. I just checked the battery building and we're actually in a deficit position. We're using 1300 watts more than we're bringing in. That's because the heat pump is on down at the dome. So that's not good. We wanna get the batteries up to 100% so we can use them through the night and everything's good. So I'm gonna get started on clearing off these panels and getting the power back up. Time to do the front array. So because we got so much snow, we actually have to clear the stuff that's at the bottom of the panels because there's no more room for it to fall down. Plus, if we left it like this, it would eventually harden, and then if we got more snow, it would just keep building up, blocking out more and more of the panels. So we just kind of like push it under the panels, away from the panels, just anywhere instead of up. All right? This is a lot of work. <sighs> So 
So we were just chatting while we were having lunch and talking about with a really good idea. I'm gonna give you credit for that one, hun. But, so with everything that we have left to do today, it's not gonna be possible to get it done in order for the crane to get set up tomorrow and start lifting the addition onto the container. So, Todd called Mel to see if he was free this afternoon. He's actually ripping down the road right now on the tractor. So we love Mel, he always makes time for us, which is just, he's the best, truly. And what he's gonna help us out with is, this embankment right here is very, very steep. If you remember when the wood stove went in, it's just so sketchy, like that truck almost tipped over. We have some very heavy equipment coming tomorrow to help with the lift. So we need to build this base up so we're able to get the crane in this area right here. I'm gonna get out of Mel's way. So we can get the crane in this area and then start lifting the pieces for the addition from right here all the way up there. He's having so much fun. While Mel's doing that, Todd and I need to shovel all around the container house and make sure it's a safe workspace for the workers tomorrow. So Mel's gonna do his thing, we're gonna do ours and get it done. So much work like <sighs> we've been shoveling literally all day it's wild and honestly it is the best thing ever that we called Mel because there is no way we would have been able to get this all done like it's, at it's all impossible. yeah and he's making really quick work of it over here so he just keeps going load by load and it's getting bigger so that's really cool to see because it's gonna be so so much safer down there for when we're doing construction so yeah, I'm, um, I'm really glad we did this we were gonna try and get away with not doing it but the crane guys were right, like we we need it just to be safe, so. Yeah. So anyway, we are going to divide and conquer right now. I gotta quickly run over and just shovel a path to the workshop door and Tyler's gonna check in with Mel and see how he's doing and then you should probably put, nap. well first you can have a nap, but can you put a cone over top of the septic pipe so he knows where it is? Mm. Just thought of that. Well actually Mel thought of that this morning and I still haven't done it yet, so. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna just keep going. We're getting lots done today and that's awesome. So let's do it. I have no idea how we did it, but we are officially ready to go for the crane tomorrow with six hours until we need to get up and get to work tomorrow morning. I'm so really proud of us. That was like, that was nuts even for us. Yeah, it was. Something definitely to be proud of, but we're gonna try and get a good night's sleep. So we'll catch up with you in the morning. Oh my god, I cannot believe this is finally happening. I can't get over how big it is. It's it, so it's much so bigger. It's so much bigger than I thought it was going to be. 